What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today I'm going to teach you how to propagate a watermelon peperomia. So let's check it out. To get this one started you're going to need a watermelon peperomia with a few spare leaves that you can chop off. This is quite a different process compared to a lot of plants I propagated but still very interesting and fun. I was going to show you some pretty b-roll of this plant before I started chopping it up but for whatever reason I hit record at the wrong time and got nothing. So what you're going to need to do is find some healthy leaves and then you're going to cut them off of their stems about two to three inches. And this is not like pothos or other aeroids where once you cut it it makes a new growth so whenever you cut this leaf off you can just kind of kiss that goodbye from the parent plant and it will not grow that new leaf back. Once you've done that you should have a little pile of leaves with two to three inch stems coming from them and now we can move on to the next step. You're going to have to make a cut across a leaf and make sure you're cutting like the actual pattern in half and you're not cutting with the pattern if that makes sense because I don't know if it'll work the other way. Try to also cut it in half so there's pretty much an even amount of plant material on both halves once you separate them. That way you don't have like one big one and one little one. You want it pretty even so that we both have a chance of producing babies. You can probably see from here too that you should pick some larger leaves. If you pick really small leaves, you might not have enough material and your success rate might be smaller. So try and choose the larger, healthier leaves. What's interesting about this plant to me is even though we took one leaf cutting, there's two different methods from one leaf in which you can grow these babies from. You should kind of have a pile looking like this where you have your leaves all chopped in half and ready to go on to the next stage. Once everything's cut up we can move on to the next step and that is preparing our tray in which we're going to actually propagate these in. I'm going to use soil because from what research I've seen most people are using it but in the future I will do some experiments with different mediums because I have a good feeling sphagnum moss or even perlite might work just as well. My container is about three to three and a half inches deep and I would say that's pretty good however I have seen people do it in like seedling trays which are a little less deep. For this I'm just using some generic potting soil and I'm just going to place these leaves in about halfway deep and the cut side into the soil. You can get away with planting these actually quite close to each other. Mine are only about a half an inch away and again I put them about halfway into the soil cut side down. As for our cuttings with the stem I have seen people produce babies from the end of the stem so we're going to try that method as well. And all you're going to do is bury that stem down into the soil. Make sure it's not pushed up against the bottom of the actual container and there is some room for some growth to come out. At this point if you followed along you should have something that looks just like this. Next I watered them but again I did not saturate it where it's just soaking and sopping wet. I just gave it a, like a good decent watering and I think the clear container helps quite a bit because you can kind of watch how deep the water penetrates and you can kind of avoid pouring too much in. I'm going to try a water method also just to see what happens and I'm only going to use the stem ones because I think they're a little easier to prop up in water but I might do some future experiments with the other kind. But again I'm just going to fill a jar with some water and put it so the stems are in the water. One month went by and I didn't see anything so I thought the experiment was failed however I kept up with it because the leaves were doing fine. But finally after two full months from cutting I did notice that there were some pretty decent sized sprouts coming out of all the half cut leaves. They all had their little watermelon marks on the leaves and they did look pretty awesome. However, I did notice that none of the actual like stem cutting halves produced anything yet. So it's just been the kind of like the tip or like the just leaf end that have been producing these babies. I've seen a lot of people cover theirs with humidity domes and whatnot. However, I did not do that. I just kind of watered mine almost like a normal house plant and just never let it get too bone dry. And that seemed to do the trick. I didn't see any real visible growth on the ones I put in the water. However, about five days later after the two month mark, I did take a look at them closely with some of my macro lenses and I did see that there is what appears to be some sort of green growth coming out of it besides the roots. I believe that is the start of the new plants, so the water method is sort of working. However, it seems very slow and very prone to rot because it is a little soggy in certain areas. All right, we are at the three month mark and you can see they're really starting to take shape from what was kind of some little wrinkly tiny leaves with barely any pattern. It's turning out to be quite iconic and looking just like the parent plant, however just a slight bit smaller. Mine are a little leggy and I do believe they're not getting enough light in my current area, but I don't have a lot of space so it's just kind of too bad for these poor plants. I'm guessing if I gave them ample light they would be a lot shorter and a lot more compact, so I would definitely suggest keeping these under a nice strong grow light just to guarantee you get a more compact and less weak plant. At this point too there's multiple growths coming out of each leaf so we're definitely getting a lot of good plants. However I still have not seen any growth from the actual um, stem cuttings that we put in there but those might just be taking a little while. Alright we are just 10 days short of 4 months and they're pretty darn leggy. Maybe I need a fan or something but they're pretty, pretty floppy so again I definitely want to reiterate you're going to want a strong light for these. 
However, at this point, I'm going to try and repot them and kind of see what's underneath the soil because we haven't really seen kind of what's going on underneath and maybe it's too early to pull them out, maybe it's too late, I don't know. So let's dig in there and find out. Before we start digging away though, let's take a look at the water propagated ones and just see where they're at. Looking up close, they do have quite a bit of roots, but nothing has really gotten all that long for being in there for almost four months. I still do see that little green growth looking thing, and maybe that's a new one and I kind of lost old ones on the way. But for now, I definitely would not recommend the water method. It just takes so long. A lot of algae can build up and maybe you'd have more success if you kept it more clean. But for me, the soil is definitely the easiest way. All right, so let's get back to the soil propagated ones and see what we're up against. After kind of breaking them out of their soil, I did kind of come to the conclusion that I probably should have left these guys go a little bit longer, maybe even a whole another month. I mean, they do look strong from the surface, but under the soil, they don't have a lot of roots and they're still kind of dependent on the leaf. I did end up breaking quite a few off the leaf on accident and there just isn't much roots, but it might not be the worst and we still might have a chance for successful growth. So I'm going to try and repot these things up and kind of get them split away from their leaf and see if we can successfully get some new plants that can grow on their own. I did try and plant them a little bit deeper just to kind of eat up a little bit of the legginess, but maybe if I were you guys, I wouldn't plant them as deep as I did and kind of keep it to about the same as how you pull them out of their original propagation trays. But then again, maybe if you wait longer, they might just have a better root system and you can just pop them in kind of where I did anyways. Once I got them all potted up, I did water them and kind of set them under the lights and just waited to see if they ended up taking. All right, so after about five entire months from the day I took the initial cuttings and planted them, here we are. I don't know if you can notice, but you can definitely tell there are less leaves in these pots than when I first potted them up. And that's because quite a few actually kind of died off and rotted off when I think I either one, overwatered them, or two, I just harvested them quite a bit too early where they just didn't have enough root structure to really get going in the soil. However, the ones that did survive my mishaps are doing quite well, so I definitely recommend to be very careful with overwatering because I'm pretty sure that's what claimed most of my leaves because they just kind of turned black and kind of got goopy. This smaller pot probably took the worst beating and they pretty much completely died off. However, like most of the time, I'm too lazy to kind of throw it out and I give it a little extra time to see if it can bounce back and it did. So there are small growths starting on each one and I'm being very careful not to overwater. If I've learned anything over the past two years, it's to water your plants and not water the pot. And what I mean by that is if your plant only has two or three leaves, it only needs enough water for two or three leaves. Even if you have a six inch pot, you don't need to saturate the whole thing. You just need to give it a little bit of water so it can maintain its small root structure and leaves. Maybe you guys already knew this, I don't know, but I've kind of just slowly come to that conclusion. And lastly, here's the propagated babies with the mother plant. And you can see that it hasn't taken any damage from the initial cuttings and looks just fine, although a little leggy because again, I think I need stronger lights for this specific species. Well guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you learned how to propagate the watermelon peperomia. And you can see it actually takes quite some time to get a successful propagation. And if I were you guys, I would definitely leave it go an extra month just to have much stronger starter plants so you don't lose so many during the transplant process. And remember not to overwater these guys because they seemed awfully sensitive in their early stages. As always guys, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.